Hey friends, welcome to our greenhouse and welcome to our channel. I gotta tell you, I'm really tired of hearing this one thing that's aimed at the homesteading community. And it's something that everybody does. So the put downs are really hypocritical. Let's talk about what that is. So what's that one thing I'm talking about? Well, it's prepping. What is prepping? Well, it's basically what your grandmother or great grandmother did to just get ready for winter time. Or in our case, it was something that we were encouraged to do when living in a hurricane zone down in Houston. Get some extra batteries, some extra water, a flashlight, so on and so forth, prepping. Or additionally, for me, building houses in Houston, we put hurricane strapping on the roofs of the houses that we built, why? Because we were preparing for higher winds that could rip the roof off. That's it, prepping. And who's doing this twisting of a normal activity? Of course, it's the media. They're seeking out the most boisterous, bombastic, ridiculous characters to glorify and then slapping some ridiculous name on it when that does not define who we are. Of course, people remember doomsday preppers and those people weren't necessarily off the rocker conspiracy theorists, but they were made to look like that and they got paid for the show and it should have clicked in their heads that they were being exploited. But maybe they didn't care because of the money. But that's speculation. I don't know that for sure. We're not talking about having 25 years worth of food for 10 families and thousands of gallons of gas stored up. We're merely talking about being prepared for something that might arise like a hurricane, like fires, like everything that's else that's going on right now, right? If you're watching this and you're new to this type of lifestyle and you're a little hesitant to do it, don't be, all right? Because everybody does it. And that's the point really of this video is that there are billionaires who are prepping. Look, that Zuckerbucks guy, he's building a big bunker in Hawaii and other billionaires have built big bunkers in New Zealand, which they believe is the safest place on the planet but they could own media companies, and check that out, that turn around and belittle people like you and me who are out here who are just a little prepared. And the rich, even though they may not have two weeks of food in their house, they are always prepared financially, right? They are diversified financially, just in case something happens to one asset class. They are preppers too, everyone is. So your average home in the United States has about two weeks of food in it, and the average grocery store in the United States has about three days of food. As an aside, I recommend that you have about three months of food stored up for you and your family. And what that can do too is be a hedge against inflation prices on food. That's also a hedge against something called shrinkflation. I used to buy a jar of olives that were 10 ounces. They were like 350 and now the bottle is seven ounces. Same price. So your preparations might not help you in every single situation. However, certain other smaller preparations that you make might help you out. One thing that comes to mind is those people in California who just lost their homes. Potentially, they could have an easy bug out bag, I guess you could say. I don't recommend bugging out, but when a fire's coming, you gotta get out of there. The bug out bag could have some really important papers in it, your passports, your deed to your house, whatever it is, stored up in there some extra cash where you can just grab it really quick and go. Or maybe if you were not home and at work, you've already got that with you. I'm not saying be reckless with your important papers. I'm just saying maybe think ahead a little bit. Why do I say this? It's because no human is coming to save you, right? You are your own first responder. For however amazing those firefighters were in California, they had a problem, right? They didn't have any water, the, there wasn't enough of them, they weren't staged in the right areas, a whole bunch of stuff happened. So you are your, first res your own first responder. Remember that all the time. Please do not rely on any government agency or any NGO to bail you out. It's up to you to prepare. Look, food storage and planning ahead and a little bit of prepping is just like having insurance. We all have insurance, right? Car insurance, life insurance, home insurance, many different types of insurances, and that's just one of them. Some people have long-term disability, short-term disability, whatever it is, you're trying to hedge against a catastrophe. And 
What's the most important thing to hedge against in a catastrophe if you're not able to get it? And that's food and water. And it's even better if you can grow your own. So get out there, plant a garden, have some extra canned food. There's no difference between the two, except for the health of the food, so keep that in mind. And now, of course, as I always do in my videos, I wanna to talk to my Christian friends. You and I know that the most important preparation that we can do is have a personal and close relationship with Jesus. And that comes through the careful study of his word. Because friends, this world is not our home. We are just passing through here on our way back to him. But if we don't prepare to meet him, then we'll lose him. So friends, prepare in every way that you can because everybody does and don't let anybody denigrate you for it. Now I want you to share in the comment section below what your experience is with prepping. And then I want you to check this video out right here, which talks about a tool that we use to plant our garden every year. Have a beautiful, blessed day. See you next time. Bye.